We're learning more tonight about a deadly crash at the border near El Centro. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee in for Barbara Lee Edwards. Border Patrol agents say the 13 people killed were among more than 40 migrants they believe entered the U.S. illegally through a hole cut in the border fence. At least six survivors of the crash are still being treated in San Diego hospitals. News 8's Heather Hope has an update on the investigation. Carlo Marcella, we're getting a closer look tonight at the 10 foot long breach at the border wall that agents in El Centro say smugglers used to sneak in dozens of migrants yesterday. One SUV burst into flames, the other carrying 25 people crashed. Construction crews got deep down in the trench at the very spot where there is a hole in the border fence east of Calexico. Workers use measuring tape while closing up the wide gap. Agents say two SUVs drove through early Tuesday morning. Border Patrol says its surveillance shows about 44 migrants getting into the U.S. through two separate SUVs. One a red Chevrolet Suburban carrying 19 people caught fire and its passengers escaped and were found hiding in the brush before being taken into custody. While the Burgundy Ford Expedition crammed with 25 people crashed into a tractor trailer in Holtville killing 13 people. Uh, we have been able to identify identify 10 uh, people of uh, Mexican origin who were deceased in the accident. The expedition's 22-year-old driver is among the dead. Six survivors of the crash are being treated at trauma centers in San Diego. The 68-year-old big rig driver, Joel Beltran, is recovering in the hospital. Investigators say the SUV had two seats in the front, but all of the other seats were removed from the back to cram in more people. Some of the victims were, were ejected from the vehicle. There's some walking wounded that, that pulled themselves out of the vehicles. The border fencing is now repaired with reinforcements as investigators dig into the dangerous smuggling attempt. Our border is no stranger to breaches. Just 10 days prior in Otay Mesa, border agents arrested 14 undocumented migrants. They say were smuggled into the U.S. through an opening in the border wall there before getting into six separate vehicles. Immigrant rights advocates are too following the case closely. Alliance San Diego released a statement saying the tragic loss of precious life is a regular occurrence in the southern border region, often instigated by Border Patrol high-speed chases. But El Centro Border Patrol agents were adamant in saying the SUV was not being chased by Border Patrol. There are no other agencies or no uh, law enforcement personnel behind the vehicle. The Mexican consulate is contacting the families of the deceased. Some of the families are in Mexico, some of them are in the United States, and uh, we will uh, help them, of course, with the process of the transfer of remains. The NTSB is continuing its investigation into the deadly wreck. Heather Hope, News 8. Thank you, Heather. There's still a lot of questions about how 25 people could have fit into that SUV involved in the crash. Coming up in our second half hour, we're going to get inside a similar Ford Expedition for a closer look. We sure needed the rain, but that late winter storm also brought thunder, lightning, and some flooding in parts of the county. A lot going on. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis for a first look at your microclimate forecast. Carlene. And snow. A whole oh. lot was in the mix for today. Here's some video that we shot earlier today talking about some flooded roadways. That was around Kearney Mesa. So as we went to the late morning hours, we were seeing some downpours. We were seeing small hail. We were seeing a whole lot going on in some flooded roadways out there. As I mentioned this was taken earlier today in Kearney Mesa. So the late morning hours into the afternoons where we saw the bulk of that moisture. Now we're starting to taper off a little bit more. And as we get past 10 p.m. tonight, that's when we're going to have a, a drying trend. Taking a look at the last six hours, just an influx of moisture, all because that low is still over us. Still quite active with our radar, also still seeing some mountain snow. This is the view from Palomar Mountain. You can see the snow on the ground, and this is looking north. So we still have a winter weather weather advisory. The flood advisory we had earlier today that has expired as well as the beach hazard statement for thunderstorms closer towards the coast. But we're still going with that winter weather advisory until 10 p.m. for tonight. Two inches has already fallen at Palomar Mountain and we'll see an additional two to four inches as we go into later on tonight. We'll go ahead and take a look at your complete forecast because the sunshine is coming back, but we're still holding on to rain chances next week. Coming up, Marcella. <music> County health officials reported 352 new cases today. That is just 3% of more than 13,000 tests. The two-week positivity rate is now at 3.5%. 
25 more deaths were reported today, bringing the county's death toll to 3,342. We are still in the most restrictive purple tier, but Chairman Nathan Fletcher expects the county to move into the red tier in the coming weeks. And as numbers improve statewide as well, Governor Newsom says California is having advanced conversations with Major League Baseball and hinted that some fans could be back in the stands when the season begins. But that is only if the trends continue in the right direction. San Diego County is making progress in the fight against COVID-19. New senior cases are down. The goal now is to move into the red tier later this month. News 8's Brandon Lewis goes beyond the numbers to explain how this could become a reality and the challenges still ahead. Now, Carlo and Marcella, there's really two points here. One is the number of vaccinations. There are about 10% of the people in the county who are 16 and older who have now been fully vaccinated. The other are the restrictions that were put in place several months ago that are starting to bear out now. Long lines for vaccine are back at Petco Park after more doses came in, and so too were complaints about the wait. Supervisor Fletcher says that won't happen for much longer because the site is moving next month. We'll have to move uh, by the beginning of April to coincide with the start of baseball season. So I think there are efforts to try and uh, uh, stabilize and, and disperse a little bit. Um, along with streamline. Some of that depends on us going into a lower tier. That's likely to happen by the end of the month, but leaders hinted the state may overhaul the entire tier system given the vaccines before then. We don't know what the change will be. We anticipate a change coming. We've been in conversations with it, uh, but we'll obviously have to wait uh, for that change. We think it could come in the coming days. And there's early proof the vaccines are effective. Nationwide nursing home cases are down 82% and locally are seeing a drop in active outbreaks. It's multifactorial. Certainly vaccinations, it's attributed to that, but it's also con uh, attributed just in general in the community uh, to people adhering to the uh, preventive measures. But first, we have to actually get the vaccines to San Diego. The county is still waiting on its first shipment of the one dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine and vaccine sites are running at less than half capacity because of shortages. We still don't have great clarity uh, on what will be coming uh, more than a day or two in advance. And as we've seen in the last few weeks, even when you're told something is on its way, doesn't mean it's actually going to arrive. Um, and so this, this is a struggle and this is, is very hard. The speed of the vaccinations will be a focal point over the next week and a half. They want to vaccinate as many people who are here tier 1B as quickly as possible because on March 15th, people with pre-existing conditions become eligible to also get the vaccine. Carlo and Marcella. Thank you, Brandon. President Biden is calling it Neanderthal thinking as the governors of Texas and Mississippi relax mask mandates and other COVID restrictions. Both Republican governors made the announcements yesterday. The president called it a big mistake during a meeting with lawmakers in the Oval Office today. So we asked you to weigh in. What do you think of other states dropping mask mandates and fully reopening businesses? Brandy says, I only wish California was next. We need to open. Chris writes, about time. Wear a mask if you want to, but don't ma mask shame me for not wearing one. Aaron says, I think I will not be visiting those states anytime soon. Jerry says, awesome. Hopefully the rest will follow. Kitty writes, too soon. Give our health workers a break. Diane says, at this point, people are going to do what they want. It's been a year. If you haven't already listened, nobody is going to change your mind. And finally, Rita says, time will tell. And that is the truth. You can go to any of our social media channels to voice your opinion. And thanks to all of you who have taken part in the conversation. Former NFL tight end Kellen Winslow Jr. was sentenced to 14 years in prison today for sex crimes against at least five North County women. Those crimes included rape and indecent exposure. Some of the victims gave emotional impact statements before punishment was handed down. The 37-year-old will also have to register as a sex offender for life. a deadly weekend and an overall increase in gun violence citywide, San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria announced today a new pilot program called No Shots Fire. It's designed to prevent violence by providing outreach and services to known gang members. News 8's Shannon Handy has more on this program and the plea from community leaders. Carlo and Marcella, this weekend alone, San Diego police responded to at least five incidents involving gun violence, but that is just a small example of the problem as shootings increased by double digits last year. 
Our officers are encountering more individuals with firearms in their possession each day. According to San Diego Police Chief David Nisley, in 2020, the city saw a 28% rise in gun violence and a 10% increase in homicides. The uptick is part of a nationwide trend, with some pointing to the pandemic as a contributing factor. Too many of us have been forced to accept violence as a regular part of our daily lives. And as mayor, I am not willing to accept this. San Diegans cannot accept this and we must work together to change this. The No Shots Fired pilot program is designed to prevent violence before it starts. Instead of solely relying on the justice system, it's a collaborative effort between the police department, faith leaders, and community-based organizations. Gang members will be identified and given the opportunity to get out of that lifestyle. Some of the tactics used will include community walks, street sign memorial services, home visits, and ceasefire agreements with gang leaders. There's also a scholarship component as well as opportunities to receive financial support with living expenses. The goal of the program is to realize quantifiable reductions in violence in our communities of concern. We know that a lack of economic opportunity is one of the challenges to promoting peace in our neighborhoods. We also know that it is not a quick fix to correct years of intentional disinvestment in our communities of concern. A similar program was in place here 10 years ago, so the techniques aren't new, but the current need is. Bishop Cornelius Bowser shared this message to those contributing to the violence. If you need someone to throw you a lifeline to help you get on the right path, we are here right now to support you and willing to work with you to keep you out of prison, keep you out of the hospital, keep you out of the grave. The police department provided a $50,000 grant to get this program off the ground with the hope of making it permanent in years to come.